This plant right here is known as shampoo ginger and it produces a substance that can be used to wash your hair. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to grow it, how to care for it, and in the end, I'm gonna use it to wash my hair. And best of all, it's all natural, toxin-free, and you could even eat it if you wanted to although it doesn't taste very good. Hi, I'm Christina with Forever Food Forest, a channel where I explore ways of growing food without the use of herbicides, pesticides, or commercial fertilizers. And instead, I rely on permaculture gardening principles and other natural farming techniques to grow food that's good for the garden and good for the planet. Shampoo ginger is a tropical perennial that's easy to grow in our Florida climate. And if you're up north, you can also grow it in pots. To grow this plant, you're gonna to need to find some shampoo ginger rhizomes. And here's a pro tip. These usually sell out by the time they need to go in the ground. So right now in November, December, January is the best time to secure them. If you're lucky, you might get handed down a giant root ball of ginger and you can divide this and make it into multiple plants. The challenge is actually dividing it. We got one. It smells like dirt. The great thing about growing ginger is once you get one plant, uh, you're just gonna keep getting more and more plants year after year. And when you're planting these, you wanna make sure that you plant them this side up. And once you have your rhizomes, you can proceed by selecting and preparing your site. Shampoo ginger, like its cousins turmeric and common ginger, thrive in Florida shade. If you live in a cooler climate up north, you do want to grow this in full sun. And if you want to get creative, you can grow this near a pool or your outdoor shower area. Let's get to planting. I'm just throwing them wherever they land. That's where they'll grow. Oh, you're going to help? Look at you helping. What a helpful kitten. You wanna plant these about two to four inches deep, this side up. You got it. I find that shampoo ginger does okay in our sandy Florida soil. However, I do like to amend the site by digging a trench and adding organic matter in the form of kitchen scraps and weeds that I pull from the garden. This is going to help the soil retain moisture as well as provide nutrients for the growing plants. So the next question is, when should you plant it? Now remember, shampoo ginger takes nine months to mature, so the earlier you start it, the better. Ideally, you wanna plant it after the danger of frost has passed, which for us in Florida is end of January, early February. However, I started it as late as mid-April and still had plenty of shampoo. And what's cool is once it starts producing flowers, you don't have to cut them down. You can just come out and harvest your shampoo as needed. For me, it's usually from June till about end of October. And it's not just for shampoo, you can use it as a conditioner or as a skin lotion too. And the plant itself is going to die back once the temperatures cool off, but it always comes back in the spring. Another thing that I'd like to mention is that it took me two years to get the plant to produce flowers. So if you live in an area that's prone to freezing, I would definitely recommend growing these in pots so you can bring them inside to overwinter. 
I mean, they can handle one or two nights of temperatures below 40 because they're underground, but anything longer than that, I just wouldn't take the chance. As a tropical plant, it thrives in soil that's well draining and damp, but not soggy. And I find that a layer of mulch is of great benefit. And if you're growing in pots, choose a potting mix that drains well and contains lots of organic matter. And it's as simple as that. Now, if you wanted to grow big juicy rhizomes, make sure to fertilize it with Jadam liquid fertilizer once every two weeks. And do not fertilize it if you want it to grow lots and lots of flowers. And now it's time for the moment of truth. I'm going to use shampoo ginger to wash my hair. And I got a special treat for you guys because I'm not just going to use the inflorescence or the flower juice. I'm also going to squeeze the juice from the rhizome. As I was doing research about this plant for this video, I learned that it has a lot of beneficial uses in folk medicine. And a lot of those beneficial compounds are found in the rhizome. So a few of the benefits of the rhizome juice that interested me were the anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial. Because I'm going to be honest with you, I kind of have an itchy scalp and I'm hoping that using this will help soothe it. I'll let you know how it works. So I got out my solar powered battery pack and used my blender to chop up the rhizome into tiny pieces. Now, if you don't wanna use a blender, you can use a mortar and pestle to smash the rhizome into smaller parts. Then I took my nut milk sack and used it to squeeze out the juice. Look at that, we have shampoo. I don't know if I'd wanna put this on my hair, but I'm gonna try. First, I'm gonna try the inflorescence juice. This one has a consistency of more of a shampoo. Is it soaping up? Is it doing anything? It feels like it absorbs straight into my hair. Oh, it smells amazing. You should grow this just so you can have amazingly amazing smelling hair. Okay, now on this side, I'm gonna use the rhizome juice. The color is really pretty. The smell is earthy. The smell is earthy with a hint of ginger. And if this doesn't work as a shampoo, I can always try it as a base for a handmade soap. I'm gonna try to get some of it on my scalp. Okay. Neither one of these actually suds up really well. But we'll see how they <laughs> but we'll see how well they actually clean my hair. And now three minutes have passed and I'm gonna rinse it out. It's not just used as shampoo, you can also use it as a skin lotion. And it smells amazing without any artificial fragrances. Now as my hair is drying, it's starting to feel a little bit coarse, like a horse. So I heard that women in Hawaii use this as a leave-in conditioner, so I'm going to try it. Now normally you don't want to cut down the flower because it's going to continuously produce more and more shampoo, but we are coming towards the end of the season and I wanted to demonstrate this for this video, so I cut it down. I believe that you should be using every part of the plant. And the more research I did about the shampoo ginger, I learned that not only is the inflorescence useful, you can also use the rhizome of the plant. And the stems are especially beneficial because they have a compound in them called zerum bone. Remember, this is not medical advice. This is channel is for entertainment purposes only, but purportedly some of the benefits of zerum bone are anti-inflammatory and anti-aging. It's actually used in a lot of beauty products. So I decided to juice the stems. This is the juice right here. I used it as a face mask and it actually feels pretty nice on the skin. It has a very strong green chlorophyll -y smell to it. I'm not an organic chemist. Um, I just like to experiment. I'm thinking of making a soap with it or doing a tincture because I did read that alcohol will work as a, state, as a preservative on this. But then you don't want to put the alcohol on the skin because it's going to be drying. So, so if you know, I'm open to ideas. While neither one of these cleans like a conventional shampoo, I did find that the juice from the root or the rhizome did soothe my irritated scalp. 
and it actually left my hair smelling pretty clean. The juice from the flower or the inflorescence does work really well as a leave-in conditioner. Now it has been three days since I used this to wash my hair and as you can see it did not fall out. Does it clean better than store-bought shampoos? No, nothing is going to be as good as industrially made chemicals. But I do find it to be a lot more gentle on the hair and it's also a little bit more drying, but that could be due to the water. I can always use something like argan oil, castor oil, or shea butter to put moisture back into my hair. Hey guys and gals, it took me over a year to make this video trying to document the whole growth process for you. So if you enjoyed it, make sure to drop a like down below. If you have any hair care tips, drop them in the comments and you've made it to the very end. I very much appreciate every single one of you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.